What's going on everybody? Islam Warrior to Blanca and we are back for another Borderlands 3 character build video. This time around, we're rocking with Boring! You don't want to hear about that, Vault Hunter! You want to hear about loot and packs and explosions! I'm Tori, and I'm here to ask you one question and one question only. EXPLOSIONS! Well, Mr. Torg, if you'd let me finish, you know that. That sentence had too many syllables. Apologize! As I was saying, this time around, guys, we're gonna be rocking with Moe's and her explosions build. This one is all about things that go boom. If you'd like to see the fireworks from grenades, nukes, rocket launchers, this is going to be the build for you. If you haven't already noticed, this build is different from a lot of the ones that we have done up to this point because we have completely filled out one entire skill tree. And the reason for that is because Mose is a very interesting character. Unlike some of the other characters, she's pretty straightforward when it comes to her different skill trees. There are small synergies between the trees here and there. However, like a lot of the other soldier classes from the previous Borderlands games, it appears that Mose has very defined specialties when it comes to her skill trees. Of course, Demolition Woman being the one that's all about explosions. We did take points, and I'll go over those first just to get those out of the way. First, in Security Bear, so Iron Bear gains a bubble shield that reduces damage taken. The shield deactivates if it sustains too much damage, reactivating after a short cooldown. So we did get this as well as the Daka Bear, which adds a man turret to the back of Iron Bear, and then we had one extra point at the very end that went into Cloud of Lead. So occasionally Moses and Iron Bear shots will deal additional incendiary damage and won't consume ammo. But that was just an extra point that honestly we had nowhere else to put. But the core of this build is all about Demolition Woman. Like I said, this tree is all about explosions. However, it goes into that plus because Iron Bear has the best explosions probably in the entire game. There's a lot of skill points that will also go into allowing Iron Bear to be out as long as possible, as well as the action skill cooldown as short as possible. Jumping straight into it, guys, we started with Fire in the Skag Den. Whenever Moe's deals splash damage, she deals bonus incendiary damage. With the core of this build being all about explosions, there's going to be plenty of splash damage. Any additional damage that we can do on top of that to help us rack up a lot out of those kills is definitely going to be a plus. 15% bonus incendiary damage isn't a bad thing to have at all. One of the first perks that we get in terms of making sure Iron Bear is out as long as possible to really take advantage of the weapons that Iron Bear offers, we're going to start with deadlines. Firing Iron Bear's weapons drains less fuel. Killing an enemy while Iron Bear is active increases fuel. This skill has diminishing returns. For those of you that don't know, fuel for Iron Bear is essentially its cooldown timer. While you have Iron Bear active, you you will be able to use Iron Bear until it runs out of fuel. So keeping that fuel drain as low as possible, as well as returning some of that fuel, is going to be huge for keeping Iron Bear out and available. Speaking of weapons for Iron Bear, we are of course going with the V35 grenade launcher. V35 is a semi-auto grenade launcher. Its grenades are not affected by Moses' equipped grenade mod. Doesn't sound like much until we add the augment, which will completely change how this grenade launcher works. And then we also added the Vanquisher rocket pod. The Vanquisher rocket pod is a rocket launcher capable of rapid firing volleys of unguided explosive rockets. Again, doesn't sound like much until we add the augment later on in the tree and you will see where this build really shines when you combine the two different weapons and their associated augments together. So going back into the last skill for the first line, we have Grizzled. It is a kill skill. Killing an enemy reduces Moses' remaining action skill cooldown time. This skill has diminishing returns. Another skill that is going to allow us to bring Iron Bear back that much faster in order to take advantage of all of the awesome things that go boom that Iron Bear can give us. Another perk that is going to help with Iron Bear's longevity is Stainless Steel Bear. Iron Bear gains additional armor and ink increased maximum fuel. Again, that fuel being very key. The longer we can have Iron Bear out, the more grenades and rockets we're able to shoot, the more enemies we're gonna be able to melt, the more explosions we'll be able to see, the more hype Mr. Torg is gonna be about this entire build. Speaking of Torg, Torg Cross Promotion is the next perk, something that's going to be huge for a lot of the various explosions that this build will have. All splash damage dealt by Moe's has a chance to double in size. Coming over to Means of Destruction, whenever Moe's deals splash damage, there's a chance to add ammo to her currently equipped weapons magazine. 
with a smaller chance to return a grenade. So the key thing for this particular build is the small chance to add a grenade. As you'll see as we go through the rest of these skill perks, grenades are gonna be huge for Moe's in particular. Uh, so this 6% chance is gonna be great because as we are able to regenerate grenades, then we're able to throw more grenades, then we're able to get more splash damage, which will add more incendiary damage, which will essentially allow us to not only survive with some of the perks that you'll see later on the tree, but also take out the enemy. Going into the third line, the first skill that we have is pull the holy pin shout out to monty python and the holy grail and the holy hand grenade because i love this easter egg moses grenades have a chance to score a critical hit dealing greatly increased damage sources of critical hit damage do not affect grenade critical hits we can get a crit with a grenade that's going to be pretty huge especially if you have one of those grenades say they bring back the homing stickies from borderlands 2 there's going to be a pretty good chance you might be able to get some good critical hits when it comes to those particular grenades. 30 percent chance definitely something that's going to be a uh, great when it comes just lobbing those things out and getting that extra damage with Moe's. Say you have a Merv grenade, for example, then you're going to have 30% chance per Merv bomb that comes out of that grenade, which is going to be awesome. Auto Bear. After Moe's exits Iron Bear, it will remain deployed in place for a short time. While Auto Bear remains active, it will target and attack nearby enemies until its duration ends then it will charge at the enemy and self-destruct at the very end of iron bear's fuel drain you can jump out so you'll have iron bear continuing to shoot the weapons that you have equipped on it you will be able to shoot giving you that extra gun and on top of that at the end of that duration iron bear is going to charge the enemy and explode kamikaze style another awesome explosion that is going to be amazing for this particular build then we go into the grenade launchers augment and the first key piece to what we have going on when it comes to our specific iron bear action skill build occasionally the v35 fires a singularity grenade that pulls in nearby enemies before exploding. This augment is called musical chairs for a reason. It's gonna bring everyone together and then you'll be able to use your rocket pod or as you can see the augment that we have later on in the tree in order to take out a large group of enemies, which is going to be awesome. The thing that I really like about this skill in particular too is it says every seventh grenade it's not random so if you're keeping track of this or you're paying attention to it you can actually time out how this works you know shoot your six grenades and then hold on to that seventh one until you see the mob show up throw the singularity in pull them all together and then hit them with a big explosion which we'll show you guys in a second then we come down to the next line and we have vampire whenever Moe's damages an enemy with a thrown grenade for every enemy hit she restores a portion of her missing health not only are our grenades going to be just blowing up the enemies doing splash damage to incendiary getting critical hits doing all this massive damage we're also going to be restoring a 20 percent of our missing health per enemy hit. So if we're running around with one health and there are a group of five enemies, let's say we have a Merv and we throw a Merv out there and we hit all five enemies, that is full restoration of our health bar. That is going to be awesome. Again, explosions are not our only awesome to look at. They don't only do a lot of damage, but in this case, they're also gonna keep us alive, which is crazy. Then we come over to why can't I carry all these grenades? Increases modes grenade carrying capacity. Doesn't seem like a huge skill, but it's an extra three grenades on top of all of the other grenades that you're gonna have by the time you get to this level, assuming that you bought all of those upgrades from Marcus. As you buy Marcus's grenade upgrades, similar to what we were doing with Earl and Borderlands 2, this is going to be ridiculous. I don't know how, what the cap is as far as grenade carrying capacity goes, but add another three to that, that's three more chances to score all those critical hits. That's three more chances to potentially restore your entire health bar. That's three more chances to get 15% extra incendiary damage. That is going to be amazing. That is three more chances to take advantage of explosive punctuation. When Moe's deals splash damage, her action skill cooldown rate is briefly increased. An extra 25% on that action skill cooldown, which then is being added to every time we kill an enemy, that's an extra five seconds that we're taking off of that cooldown. So those will stack on each other if you get kills with your grenades. So the last is the next skill that we add. Moe's gains the ability to throw grenades while in fight for your life. If she threw a grenade before gaining second wind, a grenade is refunded. I love this skill and I'll tell you why. 
I love this skill because in Borderlands 1 and 2 and the pre-sequel, I cannot tell you how many times I've been in fight for your life and I've had an enemy or a group of enemies either behind a barrier on the other side of a wall or just even in front of me, but they got a decent amount of health. And all I'm thinking is, man, if I could throw one grenade, if I could throw my electric chair, I would just take them all out and I would get my second win, no questions asked. But instead, I'm stuck here shooting this gun, who's which is not doing nearly enough damage and then of course I die and have to do the whole thing over again. The ability to just throw, it's not even throw a grenade, it's throw grenades. So if you go down, you could just lob all your grenades, get lucky, second win, here we go. And then on top of that, a grenade is refunded. So if you throw every single one of your grenades and you come back, you're not screwed because you're out of grenades. You come back and you get a grenade. So that grenade that they give you back, you can then throw that and get all your health back, do all this extra damage, hit the crit damage. On top of that, you can get the action skill cooldown and let's say you get the cooldown right away and then you can jump in your iron bear and then start doing work with iron bear and the fuel perks that you added that's going to be a pretty good combination if you're just able to lob grenades while you're in fight for your life and then the capstone to this build which again another skill that i really love not just because explosions are awesome but because whenever mose deals gun damage there is a chance of a secondary explosion centered on the target that's gun damage that's not firing a rocket at someone and having a secondary explosion that's not throwing a grenade and having a secondary explosion that that is shooting a weapon with normal bullets and just having it explode on top of somebody. So if you're rocking an SMG, every single bullet you shoot has a one in five chance to have that secondary explosion. The splash damage will add incendiary for you. There will be a chance to add ammo to your currently equipped weapon while also having a smaller chance to add that grenade. That is pretty awesome because once you add all those grenades, then of course you get the option for the critical hits and the lifesteal and everything else that we've been talking about. So all of this goes very well together. I purposely saved this for the end because because this is where it all comes together. The hammer down protocol. If you are into explosions and you are a Mr. Torque prodigy and you do air guitar while you have nuclear explosions go off in the background, this is the augment. This is the skill. Moses, the character that you need to play. Instead of a volley of conventional rockets, the Vanquisher rocket pod launches a single rocket with a nuclear warhead dealing massive radiation damage. I want everyone to take a look at that number underneath that description. That is a plus 380% damage. You're only shooting one, but who cares? 380% damage. That is crazy. This is why we have all the Iron Bear perks. We have the Iron Bear shield that we threw on to help keep them alive. Iron Bear drains less fuel and the cooldown goes down and the armor and the fuel is even better now that we added the stainless steel bear perk. Even still with the auto bear, if you wanna shoot your own gun and have Iron Bear continue to shoot the nukes, you can do that. But this is why we did it. We throw the singularity grenade, let's say it's the seventh grenade. We shoot the singularity grenade out. We pull everyone together. Once we pull them all together, we throw a nuclear warhead at their face, get an extra 380% damage, and walk away in slow motion like a badass. Oh, and after you blast Boombringer, don't look at the explosion. Just walk away from it. You'll look like such a badass. I'm telling y'all, if you like things that go boom, if you all about explosions, if you're all about grenades and splash damage and rockets and freaking nukes, man, this is the class for you. A very simple class, but in my opinion, what could be an extremely, and I mean extremely fun class to play. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to drop a like, comment, tell me what you think about this build. This is the first time I build out an entire skill tree with every single point possible. And then also don't forget to subscribe, turn on those notifications so you can catch all of the future La Muerte Blanca content. We have more character builds to do, and I wanna make sure you guys don't miss a single one. If you want to catch the live stream, once Borderlands 3 drop, that's all we're going to be streaming. I cannot wait. I stream on Mixer, Twitch, as well as YouTube. All the links can be found in the description below. I'm Lamuerta Blanca, and I'll catch you guys next time.